Hi, I'm Karen. We're here at Montevilla Sewing Center and we're going to talk about some of the attachments that are available for Janome machines for quilting. These are the attachments that come with the Janome 3160, but they are kind of across the board similar attachments for other Janome machines and so a lot of this will apply to other Janome machines. These are specifically for quilting and they can be used in some other applications too, which we'll talk about. So, got this little box here. Let's open it, see what's inside. We have a box of attachments and feet. We also have this little piece of paper that talks about what the feet are and what they're good for. It also has some directions as to how to uh, use them, how to attach them. So first of all, Let's talk about the quarter inch foot. Now if you're a quilter, you're going to be sewing your seams in quarter inch seam allowances. This foot is ideal for that. First of all, we're going to take off the presser foot, the regular one, put it away down in here in the accessory case, and put this one right back on. Now, when you use this foot, it's important to make sure you're using a straight stitch, zero, zero, straight stitch. You can move your needle a little bit over one way or the other, but be careful not to move it too far. If you do move that needle, lower the needle just to make sure that the needle's not going to touch the foot because you don't want a broken needle, right? Okay, by saying that, if your quilting pattern calls for a scant quarter of an inch, you can go over here to your stitch width and move it over a little bit. Again, making sure that your needle's not going to hit the foot. But I'm going to go back to default, which is right there, 3.5. 3.5 means it's half of 7 millimeters, and 7 millimeters is the maximum width or distance from left hand to right hand that you can do. So 3.5 is half of 7. Okay, so we have a couple pieces of fabric here. Yeah, I want to just use these. This is fine. And we line those up. Best probably to use a rotary cutter when you cut your fabric rather than scissors because you're going to get a nice straight even edge and your quilts will look a lot nicer. So put that down there. And then for quilt piecing, generally, sp generally speaking, we want to have like a 2.0 or a 1.8 stitch length. That's because in quilt piecing, you do not do a back stitch. If you do, what that's going to do is, first of all, it slows down your sewing progress, makes it so you have to back stitch in, uh, at the beginning and the end of everything. And secondly, it'll add bulk to your uh, quilt. So you don't want to have that. So what we're doing instead is making a shorter stitch length, which kind of helps lock those stitches. Think the opposite of that. If you were basting, you'd want to take stitches out easily, so then you'd have a long stitch length. So we're going for a shorter stitch length. We'll go for 2.0, that seems to be enough. Then when you line up your fabric, make sure you have it right at the edge like this. Well, what if we want to start right at the edge of our fabric? If you start right at the edge of your fabric, that fabric edge could get pushed down inside the machine. So I have a little trick for that. Take another piece of fabric, start sewing on that piece of fabric, and then when we get to the end here, lower your needle so it's into the previous fabric. Take this fabric, put it right up to that, and then start sewing. And what that does is it keeps the new fabric edge from being pushed down inside the machine. That is a common technique of quilters. It's kind of like called a on-off leader, that little extra piece of fabric. And you can also finish that way too. So I'm just going to go down to the end here. And where I'm watching is right here next to this little metal flange because I want to keep the fabric just touching that flange. When I get to the end, I'm going to go needle up, just take that off of there. And then you can also do what's called chain piecing. Let's say you had several of these pieces that you're sewing one after the other. Do the next one. And that using the on off leader, what that does is the thread actually keeps the edge of it stable. So there is our quarter inch seam allowance. And then 
in quilting, generally you push your you, uh, fold and press your seam allowance to one side. It helps uh, kind of prevent bearding of the, um, of the batting. Okay, so that is doing seam allowances with a quarter inch seam. Now you can, of course, use this anytime you want to do a quarter inch seam. You don't have to just save it for quilting. So now what I'm going to show you is, let's kind of empty this out here. This here is our open toe foot. It is similar to your F foot right here, but you can see it's an open toe. Both of these have a channel at the bottom so that if you have thick stitches, say a, a short zigzag that puts a lot of thread into the fabric that allows that to flow right through. But the beauty of the open toe foot is that you can actually see more clearly where that needle is dropping. So here is what that's good for. Put this on here, like that. And I don't have my iron right here. But right now you can see if I was going to do a, let's say, a quilt sandwich. So we've got our quilt sandwich here. Let's say this is batting and backing and so forth. And we wanted to stitch in the ditch as part of our quilting. See, now you can see where that needle is dropping, right next to that yellow fabric. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow this down, which is going to give me more precision. Take my time and just stitch along like this. Whoops, a little bit too far for the other. See, I can see what I'm doing. If I had that regular foot on there, it would be harder to do. So what we want to do is stitch right in there. Okay. I'm just taking it slow. There we go. Now I'm going to cut that off and show you what that looks like. That is stitch in the ditch. That's the wrong way to do it. This is the right way to do it right there. There are feet that you can get that are built a little different this, than this that are called stitch in the ditch feet and they have a uh, guide that goes down this. I kind of prefer this one here just personally, but you can try the other one too. Okay, so next we have, I'm going to put the regular foot back on there for now. We have a cloth guide. A cloth guide is really a neat, I have to open this back up. There we go. This is a cloth guide. And what this is going to do is give you an edge to sew along, kind of like that quarter inch foot did. I'm going to put this on here like this. And let's say I wanted to make sure I get 5 8 inch seams all the way through my entire garment, entire project. So I would line this up with the lines on the needle plate to get a 5 8 inch seam. Let's do that really carefully. Now, I don't need to worry about always finding that, that little bitty line. If you have trouble seeing that line, this is an ideal way to make sure that you get that 5 8 inch seam allowance. So, cut my fabric so that you can kind of see what more what I'm doing. There we go. Now, what you need to do is just watch where the edge of your fabric is. It should just barely touch that. And that gives you your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Or you can adjust the seam guide to whatever. If you want a 3 8 inch, if you want, uh, you can even make it out here to, I think, an inch and a half, even two inches, and you can make a wider. But what it does is it makes an even seam allowance all the way down. Um, of course, you can use the lines on your um, needle plate, but this gives you just an extra little boost, a little extra help that way. Okay, so that is the seam allowance guide. Put that over here. Also, it notice it comes with two different screws here. We have a, a longer one and a shorter one, and that may depend on, um, perhaps you have a slightly different machine. I think this could be more generically used so that if you have less depth in this screw hole here, then you want to use the shorter screw for that. Okay, next I'm going to do the walking foot. Now the walking foot is genius. What this does is it helps keep the 
bottom and top layers of your lofty fabric from shifting. It's really good for sewing like microfiber fleece or in the case of quilting where you have your top, your batting, and your backing. You don't want those layers shifting forward. So using this foot is gonna help prevent that. The way it works is every time these little feed dogs on top go down, they lift up the foot to pre prevent the drag because the drag on the bottom of the foot is what pushes that top layer forward. So the way we put this on, first of all, we get our screwdriver out. And I can find the screwdriver. Should have had my bigger screwdriver, but this will work. Yeah. There we go. Okay. And when you're changing your needle and your feet, for safety purposes, it'd probably be a good idea to turn things off, but then, of course, you wouldn't have the light that you see here. So I'm going to take this ankle all the way off like that, set that to the side, and to put this on, now this is where that's going to go. So we're going to start the screw right here, just so that we don't have to hang on to that. And when you put this on, you're going to want this part over the needle bar. See, this screw here is what holds the needle into the needle clamp. Well, there's a little extra metal here, which allows for this to be above it. And this is what's going to cause the up and down motion of the needle is what's going to cause this mechanism to work. And I'll show you that. So make sure that's up there. Slide that on carefully, making sure that's above the needle bar. Let me tighten this down. Make sure it's really nice and tight. I also kind of like having a cross point screwdriver with my sewing machine accessories. And this, um, the, the screw there will accept a cross point screwdriver or flat point, either one works great for both. Okay, make sure you tighten it down more than finger tight. That's important. Okay. Now this particular foot is also open-toed, so it can actually be used for, similarly to this foot that I just showed you here, but it has the advantage of being a walking foot too. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bit of this fabric here, nice cut edge. What we're going to do, see how those edges are even. We want to keep those edges even. Now when you're quilting, and I'm lifting this up a little higher to make sure it gets on there. When you're quilting, you want to have a longer stitch length when you're going through all of those layers because the thread has to go further. So in order to keep your, th your stitches from kind of compressing and bunching up a little bit, we want to have a longer stitch length, maybe even 3.5. Okay, so. I'm not pinning anything. You can certainly, if you have a bigger quilt, you'd probably want to pin some areas away from where you're stitching just to keep, when you're moving the quilt around, to keep the, the layers together. But as far as pinning right in front or right next to, you don't have to do that with this. Now watch how it goes. I'm gonna have that go really slow. See how each time the, the needle comes up, it pushes those little teeth down, which effectively push the foot away from the fabric. And you can see that it's staying nice and even and straight there. And of course I could sew faster just for demo purposes I'm showing you this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that there. And see how nice and evenly that kept. So this is a really nice tool. You can also use this, try this out when you're sewing um, something kind of grippy like vinyl. Vinyl tends to kind of stick on things and on the bottom of your uh, presser foot and it tends to want to scoot forward. This can also help with that too. So quilt for quilting. And I have actually tried this using other stitches like, uh, let's go with serpentine stitch. Okay. Let's get a new one here. These aren't very long, but that's okay. The demo's not that long either. Put that under there. Okay. This has enough width that you can do a serpentine stitch. Now I'm gonna make this a little bit longer. So 
I can't make it longer. That's okay. But you wouldn't want to make it wider either. That's fine. I'm going to go a little bit faster. So you can have more decoration to your stitches. They don't just have to be straight, but it'll still help keep your edges even. All right, now, let's say you had a line of decorative stitches that you did, or even straight stitches. You've heard of channel quilting. Channel quilting is where you have those, uh, you might have seen them in vests uh, back in the 80s where person have, have a vest and the, it, they're channel quilted with even parallel lines of stitching through lofty layers of batting. Well, if you're using lofty layers of batting, you want to have a foot like this. This little tool back here snaps right in like that. And if I wanted my channels, say, oh, inch and a half apart, I would sew the first seam, the second seam. I would run the first seam right underneath this foot. I'll show you an example of that. Let's say we're doing a channel quilt stitch that's that far away. And I'm going to go back to regular sewing. There we go. So where I'm watching now is right here, and that's going to make a parallel line of stitches right there. And then you can keep doing that, making another line of stitch this way. Again, watching right there. So that is what this quilting guide is for. And it fits kind of tight because it should. You, you shouldn't have much play in it because you want it to stay where it needs to be. Also make sure it's down on your fabric, not up in the air. It'll stay down, that's okay. But see how nice and straight and even those are? That's with this little guide here. Okay, next, I think we're gonna show you free motion quilting. Doesn't that sound exciting? Put some of these extra things away here, out of the way. Okay, so I'll take my screwdriver. What happened to my screwdriver? Oh, here it is. And we're going to take this guy back off of here. Free motion quilting is something you've probably heard about and you've probably seen. Uh, beautiful designs of it. When you're learning free motion quilting, you want to make sure that you take it slow, do some practice. I know of a master quilter that routinely will do sort of a warm up and to get used to moving her fabric around. Because when you're moving this, when you're doing free motion quilting, you're not using the feed dogs. You're just using your hands to move your fabric. So there's this little switch on the back, push that down, now the feed dogs are no longer in play. This has a little bar that's going to go above the needle bar, kind of similarly to the way this worked here. And when you put these on, always make sure that your presser foot is up, and that way you can uh, more easily put it on there. So the bar goes above the needle clamp. You tighten that down. Be sure it's more than finger tight. Screwdriver tight is what we want. And we're on straight stitch. Now it does not matter stitch width or length. However, it is possible with this foot to do a zigzag. The zigzag will just give you a sort of a, a more zigzaggy type stitch rather than the straight. But we're going to start with straight stitch on this. Okay, I've got you my practice piece right here. And when you first start, and notice when I put that down, so I can still move the fabric. That's on purpose. You want to be able to move your fabric underneath there. So some people like to make sure that the uh, thread tail on the bottom is pulled up, and you can do that pretty easily. Just needle down, needle up, then you take your thread, take a pin or something, catch hold of that thread loop, and there you've got your, your threads on the top. M most of my quilts are you only see one side anyway, so I'll just take several stitches at once and then um, cut the extra thread off. And you, taking several stitches in the same place is the, the same as using the locking stitch. So I'm going to put this under the foot. 
This also has open toe, so you really don't have to um, take that first stitch to, to bring it all up through the foot. You can just get started. Just make sure that you have your presser foot down. That's important. If you forget and leave your presser foot up and start sewing, you're going to get loops of thread on the back. That's because with the presser foot up, you have no tension here. Um, so presser foot down closes the discs onto the thread so you get a nice even stitch. So I'm going to take a couple stitches there. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit here. So go as slow as you need to go to get a nice even stitch. And try to move your fabric at an even pace. Now the reason why I have this down here is that way I'm not going slower and faster with my foot control. I can just leave my foot control all the way down at an even level and just let the stitch length be dependent on how I move my hands. So I'm going to hold on to this and then I start moving my fabric. And this is how you do it. So let's make, now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and cut those off. Some people like to um, knot it and then pull it through and you can certainly do that. So you can make like kind of a little pebble design. Okay, so if you move this really quickly, you're gonna get long stitches. If you move it really short, very slowly, you're gonna get very short, uh, short, close together stitches. So that's why you wanna kind of practice this. I'm gonna move this a little bit faster because I'm more used to having a little bit faster. And you can make curves and hooks. Here's how you would make a star. You'd go down to the one point of the star, stop there, think about where you want to go next. I'm going to go up this way, think about where I want to go next. Okay, I'm going to go down here. So stars are really nice for practicing because you can think about, okay, that's where I want to go. Now I want to go back to where I started. Now come around here and hit each point of the star. That's a good practice that way. And then try making sort of an echo around that. You can make hearts. And this is a funny looking little heart, but that's okay. So that's free motion quilting. There's all kinds of designs. You can take your uh, friction pen or whatever marker you want to use and draw designs. You can even do your quilting like um, parallel distance from the edge of the patches in your quilt. Um, free motion quilting shows up best on solid colored fabric. If you do it on a print, I like to do it if there's a certain motif in the print, then I'll maybe go around a flower or something like that. It, uh, it can really enhance a quilt. So this is something that you want to practice and try out and just have fun with it, enjoy it. Okay, so to cut the stitches, well, what I do, would do is probably tie those off, but you can also do a kind of stitch in place, which will help knot that thread. And then if you did want to pull your, your stitches through and tie them off the back, what I would do, lift up the presser foot, move it about three or four inches further away. Now this time I'm going to hang on to that thread because it needs a little tension in order to do a good cut like that. So now I can pull my thread to the back, knot it, and pull the tail end through. So that are, those are the basic stitches, basic accessories that come with your Janome 3160. These are, are also individually available. If you have other Janome machines that these did not come with, you can buy them uh, individually and use them. Um, as you can see, they have more than just quilting applications. They also have sewing applications. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave us a thumbs up and you can leave comments and questions in the area down below. And keep watching for our other videos. Thanks for watching today. Bye.